know why I suddenly disappeared from YouTube from hero to villain documentary. Perfect guy. Look at this perfect family. Look at this perfect shit. It got to a this nigga dress when I grow up, my boy. Unless he keep cutting them. Point I'm I'm looking at the video, bro. I'm like, this shit is not even real. We were like filming videos and stuff. I think each video you're pushing that boundary just a little bit more than you normally would and then you know, the next video well like i want this i ain't gonna lie i'm gonna keep it a hundred bro i feel like at the time bro pretty boy fredo was the best youtuber like 2017 ish 2018 bro his videos is just it was just way of it was advanced of the era like his videos was advanced until today's time now like 2017 people had good decent videos but like his videos were just hella advanced Far. Let me do even a little bit more. Without you knowing, you just slowly become your own demise. Because you got this feeling that you're just fucking invisible. I built this shit. I did this shit. You get money and you get fame and you think you're gonna treat somebody like fucking shit that's been down with you? No, you don't do that motherfucking shit. Every view, every like, every subscriber just adds more and more fuel to the fire. <laughs> Was him, man. I'm sorry, he was him, bro. I'm gonna keep it a hundred, bro. He was him. He might have fallen off or whatever y'all say, but he was him at a time. Let's not forget. Bro, SSA takeover, no count. I told y'all this shit. Niggas told me I whole fucking year. They don't know what I went through. They don't know my pain. They don't know my fucking struggle. They don't know why I chose to become the villain. Everybody want to be the villain. But I get it though. I feel like imagine you getting all this stuff and then you like people falling against you. You getting exposed for fake videos. So I can get how that can mess up your mental and stuff. Oh, he watching Cardi? That's backdoors, bro. Yeah, that's Cardi's video. He loves Playboy Cardi. A whole fucking year since I've been here. It took me like four different tries just to try to make this fucking video. And I found myself like every single time, bro. Like every time, like I'm trying to fucking perfect it. Before this video, I had a whole professionally edited video. You know what I'm saying? With like the perfect like comeback story. Like, hey, I've been gone for a whole year and look at this. Look at this perfect fucking life. Look at this perfect guy. Look at this perfect family. Look at this perfect shit. It got to a point I'm, I'm looking at the video, bro. I'm like, this shit is not even real. Like, this ain't even real. Like, why am I even doing this like being a youtuber it, there's there's a lot of pressure bro like you want to be perfect for the world you want to you want to be the richest coolest nigga like why not who wouldn't want to be those things but like it gets to a point that it becomes corny when it's not authentic there you go it becomes corny that was corny as fuck <laughs> when you force it never steer away from authentically being yourself because once you lose yourself nigga you can lose it all and i saw myself going down that path and i'm like gotta stop i gotta put it into it and i decided to go on a break a lot of the times when y'all are like damn i missed the old fredo i missed 2000 hey, won't he just go back to the playing gaming and stuff it's like that'd be fire 16 Fredo like when I look back at 2016 Fredo I see a corny ass nigga like I'm, I'm a I mean, like, you do grow from yourself though so I feel them though keeping it real like the nigga was corny as fuck but the thing about that nigga was that he was authentic he was real he was himself even if it was corny I was authentically myself I wasn't trying to be nobody I wasn't trying to please nobody I wasn't trying to uh, be a perfect nigga like I was just being me corny authentically what it was But it wasn't cuz of me though. I ain't do this. I ain't do this First it was that man up there. That's number one 
That's number one. I mean, he had to be corny to get people to subscribe, though. You can't be like, you know what I'm saying? Then it was y'all. Then it was y'all niggas. It was y'all niggas, bro. <laughs> it was y'all niggas, bro. Y'all niggas believed in me, dog. For real. I ain't believe in myself last year. <laughs> I was depressed, my nigga. Am I trying to laugh? <laughs> I just can't take, I'm gonna be honest, I can't take niggas crying on the internet or social media series, bro. But I feel them, though. I was the best! Things that are meant for you are always naturally gonna come to you. Facts. You don't have to force it, you don't no, have to facts. fake it. If it's meant for you and it's meant to be, it will always be. A year ago, I didn't even know none of this shit existed. I didn't know people watch someone play a video games. I didn't know about Twitch. I didn't know about none of that. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. All of this stuff is new to me. I've been learning this entire time. This is insane. Like, this is a dream fucking job. If I can make this a career, like, a bro, this nigga look like D'Angelo Russell right here. Am I tripping? Or this nigga look like D'Angelo Russell right here? That shit weird. Lifelong career, million subs type shit. I would do it, bro. Because being able to just sit here and do what you love. Bro, this nigga like D'Angelo Russell. What the fuck? Nah, hold on right quick. Hold on. Where'd he go? Nah, hold up. Where's the one with the... Yo... Yo, this is the same nigga, bruh. Am I tripping? This the same nigga, bruh. Where'd it go? Oh. Yo. This the... Hold up. Love playing video games. I love... Bro, this the same nigga, bruh. entertaining just having fun that's awesome dude if i could do that that's great a lot of niggas forget but i blew up overnight on this shit i had over a million subscribers in less than a year of me doing youtube got my second million less than a week after i was Damn. getting so big so Girl. fast life was changing so fast it got to a point i remember people used to be like this nigga's view body <laughs> Like these are fake views and these are fake subscribers. Used to piss me off so fucking bad in the beginning because I was really putting in that work. I really grind. I really worked my ass fucking off. God, I didn't fucking care. I didn't fucking care. Let's go. Because once I really got into this YouTube shit, I fell in love with this shit. Like it was never about money for me. It was always about seeing myself being. When we get when he got the money, he started changing. Self-made and self-built. I prided myself in my hard work. Prided it's myself on breath. not taking handouts and not getting shout out. Like doing the work myself. Not counting on a single soul to do anything for me. And I always wanted to be the very fucking ah, best. Nigga. So every Shit fucking hurt. day, that's exactly what I worked at. I told him. I told him I was going to do it. I grind. I worked hard. No, no, I didn't put another nigga name in my mouth. No, no, I didn't ask for no handouts. That was kind of crazy. And don't no, no handout, bitch. Fuck all y'all niggas. No handout. Nothing. No shout out. Nothing. Nothing. He did work hard. I grind. I grind. I grind for this shit. I did this shit. I did this shit. Yo, <laughs> bro, I can't. Oh my god, I can't take niggas crying on the internet. Serious, bro. My Fredo, the hardest working nigga I'd have ever seen, like in this YouTube shit for real, for real. like no cap. He probably do all this extra he shit, lying. probably all the extra shit. But when it comes to YouTube, like Fredo is the goat. Like he's really the probably the greatest of all time for real. When it comes to this work ethic pushing us, like he pushed us crazy. Like even me, like with my video, like film that shit, film that shit, keys, film that shit. Even texting me when we not even talking, like Fredo texting me saying, bro, what you doing, nigga, post some shit. Like it's been three, four months. When your dreams become actual reality, you will quickly learn a very valuable lesson. The hardest part in the journey is not getting to the top. 
The hardest part is staying at that motherfucker. There's a million other niggas that want to be just like you. There's a million other niggas that wish they were you. So every single day, you're going to be met at these crossroads. Like, will I continue to do what I'm doing to maintain what I have? Or... No, my sex, though. He's spitting right here. I'm going to try every single day to try to take it up the next level. Oh, no! <laughs> So you often will find yourself questioning your work, questioning your value, questioning the quality of your videos just because you want to be great. The want for more success can blind you. You were like filming videos and stuff. I think each video you're trying to hit a million views. I think each video you're pushing that boundary just a little bit more than you normally would. And then you know, the next video, well, I, I went this far. Let me do even a little bit more. And it just like kept going it and going. Good, and then bro, you I'm ended up in a cycle that you, it was like a hamster wheel that you just couldn't get off of. It, uh, that's probably Keep the- talking, fuck it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Trying to do it bigger and better. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, you're getting further and further and further away from yourself honestly yourself. you know like yo I'm, that was insane <laughs> i'm doing shit that i typically wouldn't do i'm hanging out with people that i would never fucking hang out with nope <laughs> all, all for the purpose of views it's like you were just chasing numbers numbers whether it was subscribers you know that that was insane bro <laughs> bro did a little a 360 turnaround and a dress is crazy. Lose money, you're just chasing numbers. Yeah. And along that way, you were losing like the things that kind of mattered more. Mobile games are going big. Free Fire Max. Become a villain. From hero to villain. The path is often paved with the shadows of choices, revealing the complex journey where noble intentions can succumb to the allure of darker paths. You get money and you get fame and you think you're gonna treat somebody like fucking shit that's been down with you? No, you don't do that motherfucking shit. You're gonna sit here for any second and make me feel bad because I put my brother on blast? I don't feel guilty for that shit. You want to be accounted for the shit that you fucking do. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't sit here and, and, and have God right in front of me and say that what is going down is okay. You can't do that because you know what? God is going to look at you and he's going to say that shit is fucking wrong. My bro I hate when people use the, like God's name and say a, a cursing word in the same sentence. I, it really bugs me so much brother has gotten money, he has gotten fame, and he don't know how to motherfucking act. That sister, who is that? My own blood tried to ruin me, my nigga. Oh, that was sister. Do you hear what I said? My own fucking blood. My own sister tried to turn her back on me and try to put me out. For what? Around this time, a lot of crazy shit was going on behind the scenes with me and Jess. I had completely got to the point in a relationship where I did not give a fuck. I just started moving fucking reckless. But the social media world had no idea about what was going on. One thing led to another. Jasmine ended up going through my phone. Ended up taking text messages, Yo. photos, videos, locations, all from my phone and confining all of this information into my sister. That's Exposed crazy. everything. Went on her social media. Yo. Bro, I never knew this. I would at you, but you blocked me. You fucking around with engagement, man. With a child, you are nasty as <laughs> the dirty ass slut. Damn, why you block it? He Atlanta ho got passed around. You were fucking surprised by that. You checked it out. Are you fucking two niggas? Say so you love one of them. Bitch, trying to get famous and what? Uh, meal ticket. I have no for for any hoes. I don't give a fuck. You are what's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. I don't like that. And blasted me as a cheater. Blasted everything that I was doing behind the scenes. And this was the first time, the very first hey, time anything personal from my family was exposed online. 
You want to sit there and, and fucking be there for your little thought ass bitch? She don't want her, her nasty ass pussy out on the internet. She better keep it cool because I'm going to sit there and I'm going to put her ass on blast again. I got no one deserves to get cheated on, disrespected, and value abuse, humbled. You're fucking yourself. What God gives, he speaks to you. Your number? We can't. When you can't take that heat, you change your profile pic, turn off your comments, and make your thing private. Comment got your ass today, boo. -boo. I, I got your Instagram. I got every motherfucking thing. Bitch, I know where you live. I got everything. Try me. If you want to, try me. Try me. If I'm keeping it real, I'm surprised that this is his first time cheating. If it is, I kind of assume this guy was a scumbag from the jump. Damn. Especially from how weird the videos on their channel have been lately. You made me feel like shit. You, you made me feel like a like bad. Shit. Because I didn't want to be with you. Yes. Niggas really got on the internet and started arguing, bro. Yes. What the f if I want to see you, if I want to see you do better, if I want to see you do better, I don't give a. I was way too fucking gone and way too mixed up on wanting to make myself look good, not taking accountability, not sticking by my girl's fucking side, not doing the things that you're supposed. They still together if they are. That's cool, man. They got through it. Mmm. Fast success uh, builds ego. Slow success builds character. That's a fact. ...to do when you were real fucking man. I told you this to your face multiple times before any girl before That's not true. So before did I not say that? We're done. <laughs> the world just sat and watched me change right in front of their eyes. Up until this point and yeah, bro, he's got I feel like he got too much. His fame was too much. That's why I rather I rather have so slow success for me because I want to be right. I want to learn as I keep going. You won't learn nothing if you get fat, fast success. You know what I'm saying? Everybody fucking loved me. It's the perfect guy. I need to, that quote. Fast success builds ego. Slow success builds character. That's With the guys. perfect family, great charisma, then everything just started to change. I'm at the point right now when you use my name and- Yo, that, this was crazy. He was on DDG head in this. Video after video after video. You see this hand, I'm slapping the shit out your ass. That's it, I'm at that point. You just slowly become your own demise because you got this feeling that you're just fucking invisible. I built this shit, I did this shit. They told you to pull up in July, you didn't want the smoke, bro. Funny, you didn't want the fucking smoke, my nigga. On everything I love, you fucking capped out, my nigga. You capped out, you a bitch ass nigga on everything I fucking love, nigga. You capped out. Every view, every like, every subscriber just adds more and more fuel to the fire. Can't cancel me. I got this shit out the mud. The only nigga that can fall off by choice is me. If I choose to. If I choose to stop working, that would be the only reason. But I, I'm, I'm way too strong, my nigga. I slowly became the villain. Even if that wasn't me. It was now the new me. Bro, he, he was just, it was just too much of. I bet you DDG watched this for sure. He probably laughing like this nigga corny as hell. I want to be the best. I'm going to be the best. Every nigga around me, we will be the best. Why? Because I believe in myself. I believe in my brand. I believe in the niggas around me. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. And this is why SSH will reign forever. In the pursuit of success, our aspirations can become a blinding force. 
leading us to actions we never thought we would take. Becoming a villain came with very temporary pleasures. It's a really risky game to play with the universe. You see, because the energy that you put into this world always has a way of finding its way back to us. Most times through that motherfucker we call karma. Only nigga that can fall off by choice is me. If I choose to, if I choose to stop working, that would be the- Why is this nigga looking like that though? Only reason, but I, I'm, I'm way too strong, my nigga. Life for me soon after got so bad. I reached some of the lowest points of my life I've Damn. ever had. Struggling to find that strength that I always knew that I had, I suddenly felt weak at times. The constant silence of being alone was just a constant reminder of dreams being shattered and opportunity being lost. Only to realize that in life, relentless in its challenges, it will only continue to test us. Nice. How do celebrities like Justin Bieber and The Rock generate hundreds of millions of dollars? It's actually not what you think. Bro, you just they make a special uh, kind of- Shut the fuck up, bro. You just want money from niggas, bro. Hey, when they be doing that shit. This is like sinking deeper. Biggest thing in 2023 that really fucked me up was my mom's health, all right? Now, I didn't want to make this no sad video, and I'm not trying to get no sympathy, none of that shit. Like, I'm keeping it real and raw with you guys. Like, early 2023, my mom, you know, her kidneys haven't yeah, always sad. been the best. You know, she is a lot older and um, like her health just started declining really fast. Like she got really sick, ended up going into the hospital literally for the entire year. Like me and my dad was at the hospital every fucking day. Damn. Oh, she's sleeping. Carol, Eva, go up there. Go touch her. Grammy. It's sad, man. Grammy. This is crazy, bro. That's why I never take life for granted, bro. Because life, you only live one time in this lifetime. You know, it's like, you never know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you don't know when you're going to get sick. Like, it's just life. Life is really precious, so that's why, like, you can't take life for granted, man. Like, you just don't know. Like, life is so short, man. Carol, we have a surprise. Ava. Mm -hmm. How's my girl? Okay. I miss you. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in the hospital looking at my mom, seeing my mom on the hospital bed thinking, one of these days, any day now, I could lose my mom. Like that's legitimately how I was feeling all of 2023. When she first got in the, in the hospital, I'm thinking, you know, all right, she might be here for a little bit, you know, uh, things are gonna get better, things are gonna be good, but like time just kept going. The moment just kept going and it just kept getting worse. Like I kept seeing my mom's health decline so bad that it got to a point that the doctors came to us and told us like, hey, y'all, do y'all want to sign do not resuscitate forms, all right? Do not resuscitate forms are basically meaning like, it get to a point where they need to bring her back to life. It's probably in your best decision to not do so because her health is so bad. I remember like going to the hospital. Yeah, bro, it's sad now. That's sad. To see her. And she was telling me about the DNR, and she's like, why would they, you know, ask me to sign that? And then I feel so bad for Fredo, because it's like, you grew up basically just with them, you know? And you've never had to, like, experience, like, loss or anything like that, you know? Like, I have. It was, it was just so hard for because... Wait, he, my... lo he lost her? Appreciate the follow. Appreciate the follow. Grew up basically just with them. Hope everyone has a fun Tuesday school with Kanye. Appreciate that. You know, and you've never had to like experience like loss or anything like that. You know, like I have. It was it was just so hard because Dang. my family's so small. 
my parents is damn near the only thing I have other than Jasmine and Ava and getting to the point where no, this is crazy. you're seeing her in the hospital bed like damn near almost lifeless as at times like almost to the point like you're looking at her you're like how the fuck is she still even breathing like how is this and how is she even gonna get better how is she here? gonna get better will she ever get better you know will this ever stop and the thing about it it just it, it just kept got it, it kept getting worse found myself like taking steps forward but shit i mean my mom is damn near fucking dying nigga like i couldn't mentally keep that shit together bro every fucking time i stepped forward bro that shit just kept pulling me back i just wanted a break man i wanted that shit to be over with like i wanted something to happen something to break through because Dealing with that shit was just so heavy on my chest, I couldn't... Yeah, bro, I can't imagine. I couldn't mentally, I couldn't, I couldn't get it together. Find much positivity in anything that was happening. Because you're in the hospital every single day. You're just like surrounded by so much... Darkness. Darkness. It's, it's hard darkness. to find any type of light. And I think had the mindset of being on a break, but it's like it kind of like happened for a reason in the sense where like you were able to physically be here every day basically just committed my whole year to you know being by my family side you know being by my mom's side being being here for my dad because you know they needed me they needed my presence so i spent every single day in 2023 you know being there for them <laughs> Mom looks so beautiful. I know. Oh my god. It looks just like them, right? Yo, she's crying. She's crying. Mom looks so beautiful. I know, man. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Like that ready to The most important thing that I learned on this whole journey is that your words hold a very valuable place in this universe, all right? Thanks. There was two times in this film where I literally spoke my fucking future into existence, you know? And I just wanna take this moment right now, manifest some things to put some good words, good energy into the air, you know? That energy that you put into this world is always gonna fucking come back to you, so that's what I wanna do. So number one, be my mom. I love you so fucking much. You mean the fucking world to me. <laughs> I found you because of the African American tag. How? What? How? I don't put. I don't put. I uh, appreciate. I mean, I don't know how that. I don't put. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I just want to put into the universe that you will be okay. You will get better. I'm here for you every fucking day and I'm thankful for you and I love you. The second thing I want to put into the universe is that I want to chase this success again. I want to chase being fucking great again, but the right way. I want to do this shit the right. There is how, where? Oh, there is. How, okay, I, I don't remember. Okay. There is. Okay. I right, appreciate it, man. Appreciate following me. I highly appreciate it. Fucking way. I know that I'm fucking great. I know that I can be great. But I'll never be great if my intentions are wrong. So I just want to put into the universe 10 million fucking subscribers this year. I'm going to work my fucking ass uh -oh, off. Afraid I'm back. not afraid of no grind. I'm not afraid of the struggle and shit. Whatever it got to take, whatever it got to be, I'm going to do it. I'm afraid here. Uh -oh. Y'all don't understand how hard this fucking year was for me. Like, it was so many times, bro, I wanted to fucking quit and... I wanted to get back here. I wanted to get back into a place where, you know, I can get back on camera just for y'all, you know? So I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. 
I love y'all. Thank y'all for always staying by my side. Thank y'all for always believing in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. Y'all fucking believed in me, dog. Y'all give me fucking hope. It's y'all niggas, bro. It be y'all niggas that be giving us hope, these YouTubers hope. So I just wanna tell y'all, thank y'all. I love y'all. I know these years have been fucking crazy, but Fredo is here, baby. I'm, I'm fucking here. I'm here in my rawest form. I love you guys. This documentary is fucking over. I did it for you guys. I made it out that dark place for you fucking guys. Oh yeah, true. They're pretty good for your discovery. Nah, for real. That makes sense. I love you guys. Thank y'all. I love y'all. I fucking love y'all. I love y'all. I'm out. In a journey from hearing the viewer villain lies the essence of redemption, tough reflection of resilience, even though most turns and paths can reach you. I ain't gonna lie, this is cool, you know? I'm gonna give this a, a 8 out of 10, little documentary. All I say is, bro, he should do, uh, he should not beef with people, bro. That's, that's, 